Good afternoon, good evening, and uh, good night anywhere you are in the world. My name is Cyprian Jason. I'm a publisher, a writer, and um, in this video, I am going to present my work, the books I published for myself and uh, for other people. First of all, I, I published this book. The one I'm holding here, Breakaway, is the last book I published this year. And um, it's all about my autobiography. It's about myself from the beginning of uh, my journey as a child to uh, finding myself in France. So let me just read the summary of uh, what we call the blog of uh, the book. Everyone has a side that we can't see. For Breakaway, it's a very different book from the others. Once Upon a Time, Stranger Lane, Nollywood, The Billion Dollars, Money Zone, the Chicago, do Chicago a Chartres, Ce Voyage qui a changé ma vie. It's um, a French book about um, the International Gospel Festival I created in the city of Chartres, which lasted for 10 years. So that book I'm going to present also, I don't know if I have it here, but anyway, it's in my office here. And ebooks, there are ebooks. The author has written. Breakaway is a heartbreaking and inspiring tale that takes the reader on the complex journey of Cyprian, which is me, the author, and his adventures. <laughs> you know, why? I wrote this book is because a good number of people uh, who met me, and I think also those who are going to meet me in future from 2023, at the year's ending, 2022 is ending, will always count me to be a lucky person. It's not easy to count on luck. I work a lot. And um, I believe in intellectual work. But some other people, you know, not everybody believes in that because you have to be good at what you can do. Like Martin Luther King said, if you are a sweeper, be the best. If you are a cleaner, be the best. Whatever job you're doing, you are a carpenter, be the best in your profession. But I can tell you I'm now one of the best in my profession, uh, sorry, in my profession as a publisher and a writer because practice makes perfect. I write every day. I'm a prolific writer. So this book, it's about me. As a child, he was written off by members, by family members. As a child, he was written off by family members based on his ambiguous fate. Based on his ambiguous fate. When you read the book, you'll find out. I'm not going to give away everything. Go to Amazon. You can buy the book. But later in life, he found a place he called his home. So this is a very interesting book for those who want to know um, the life of Cyprian Jason, a journey that took him to France. And then you, you have to buy this book on Amazon. And then uh, read it. Good reading, I can tell a good number of you who, who will be brave enough to go to Amazon to buy it. 
and then you got my contact there you can call me you can call me or make a review on amazon so this is the first book i'm presenting the second book here i published this year is a stranger lane it's about the immigrant life to, uh, when I was a student in Paris. So the story of Nigerian students who came all the way from Nigeria to study in France. So the blog again, I'm going to read, Africans who travel to France have a big dream. We all have a big dream to succeed. Some succeed and some fail, yep to make good within a very short period and then return home successfully and accomplished to help the homeland. But now that's not the case anymore. With all the case of terrorism in Nigeria, kidnapping, and uh, when you get back home, um, you can't walk with, with Nigerians because of their mentality. They are slow in walking, but here, we keep to time, eight o'clock is eight o'clock. So a good number of friends I've seen for many years I've lived in France, they are back, they, they are all back, they came back. And some of them who were preparing to go home, they overstayed, even those I met when I came, they are still here. They don't want to go back. Some of them just build houses temporarily you know, because their mates are doing that, maybe for competition or whatever. But they stay in their house, in their homes, the big homes and so on, once in a year. And uh, every year they go to Nigeria to visit people, but they can never go back, finally. So a good number of us will be buried in France. And for those who have money, will eventually um, ask relatives to take them home where they will be buried in many years to come. So with that dream that um, has become a disappointment now, no one wants to go back home. And even when you look at what is happening in terms of immigration now, people living in uh, Africa, to cross to Libya and so on. So anyone who finds um, himself here or herself here would like to stay in France or in Europe to be able to send money back to people who cannot make this journey we made. I was lucky to come here as a student. You know, I made it by air. But a good number of people are going uh, through Libya, asking for asylum. And the immigration laws here in France have changed also. So things have become very difficult. So this is what this book is reflecting on. At that period, when I came, it was easier. Uh, we were doing menial jobs and so on. I met a good number of Nigerians struggling and all of them at that period wanted to go home. But now that's not the case. If you tell somebody to go home, he will tell you, do you want me to go and suffer in Nigeria? You know, it's the reality by experts and so on. There's no development. The development that should have happened is no more happening, except for the beautiful houses you find in Lekki. Some people who have money have houses, beautiful ones, but 80% of uh, the Nigerian population, 80% um, is suffering from different angles, it's suffering because they cannot make it, it's not their fault. A good number of graduates cannot get job. So and, uh, this is why those who um, the uh, Nigerians or Africans who came at the period I came wanted to study and go back home and again give the expertise, you know, help the, um, the homeland to grow. But now you cannot blame anyone. It's not their fault. The book Stranger Lane, which can be considered an 
autobiography tale of the author's personal experience in Paris is filled with both humorous and uh, serious anecdotes on the life African immigrants uh, lead in Paris, the city of light. Yeah. Very funny situations, but which you will find in the book. In the midst of the pervasive culture shock, in cold and winter um, gripped Paris, where many African immigrants tend to dress as if they are still in their homeland, the author manages in this book to piece together the lives and times of the different and colorful characters in vivid prose. So some of you, um, if you're watching me from Nigeria and you want to come to France and uh, you happen to read this book, um, Stranger Lane Before Coming, you will meet the situations I mentioned in this book. At least the winter is very rough. Yep. I remember I came in March. I was not in winter coat. You can imagine the rough winter period month. So this is all about uh, this very one, Stranger Lane. Then another one again by me this year, you know, I did a lot of job this year. Once Upon a Time, Anthology of African Stories. So it's this book, it's a collection of different stories um, from me. Some were written by me, others I uh, collaborated with uh, writers and um, published their stories here. So it's all about stories from Africa. Let's tell our stories. The problem with Africans is that we leave Europeans to tell our stories. For example, the story of Egypt, the Egyptologists are Europeans in good number. Never mind, it's, it involves money also. You know, they have money for expedition, they have money to do the, uh, research. But we throw our stories away. When I talk to some of my friends, they say, you have to go beyond that. We don't need stories. Ah, we are looking for money. A lady told me I'm looking at my bank account. <laughs> and I told her, how are you going to make the money when other people are making money with our stories? Uh, as an African writer, this is my job. And a good number of uh, um, African writers understand what I'm saying. We are the gatekeepers of our stories. We have to write these stories, whether they give money or not. I'm sorry, um, a good number of us are still struggling and hustling. They cannot write, but tell us your story. If you cannot write, call me, see from Joseph. I have a story to tell. I'll record you and then I'll publish the story. Do not go to the cemetery. Do not go to the grave with your story. It's very selfish and stupid and um, nobody will forgive you. Humanity and history will never forgive you when you do such a thing. But unfortunately, Africans died. A good number of them died with their stories. When you come to um, the field of pharmacy, some of you remember when we were kids, we have native doctors who healed people cured people, sick people, very sick of what we know as cancer today with leaves and so on. Nobody gathered that experience. They died with their knowledge. And this is why the continent is still backwards. As long as we do not keep archives of our stories or allow people to tell your story. I mean, when I say allow people to tell your story, allow Africans like me to tell your story. Tell us your story, 
and then we will write it and then publish it. It will go into the international library where people in future, in 30 years time, in 50 years time can make something out of it. This is all about telling stories. So, but telling stories is not getting instant uh, gratification. Like someone told me, I published his book, I will not mention it, a good number of his friends said they need cash and carry. Storytelling, storytelling has nothing to do with cash and carry. It's all about building uh, momentum at the period you are writing and also looking at the future and also building and constructing your own legacy as a writer. So here, I'm going to read the blog. Once upon a time, let's tell our stories. The first story, Onome, is about incest in a Nigerian family. The second, Bimbo, tells the tale of two lovers, one in Lagos and the other in Paris, which makes us realize how long distance love is a gamble. It's a pure gamble. People who leave their wives at home and they're in America, France, and London, and the woman will be waiting for visa to come over. And then you are saying the woman should remain faithful to you. It's a gamble. If you are, if you are a damn liar. The woman eats a human being and uh, from time to time might be tempted, you know, to sleep with another man. And you too, you have been outside for many years trying to get money to please people at home and then see your woman. And then you too, you have the same temptation. So it's a catch-22 situation where we play the hypocrite. You know, the world loves that when you play the hypocrite or uh, play tricks, you know. And they think that writers will not catch you up and find out what you're doing. Because our job is to write down what is happening now. We are the gatekeepers of African stories, like I said. The third Lagos diary throws on the face of the reader the realities of life in this city. Other stories invite the reader to ask pertinent questions and provide answers to them. So I'm engaging you as a writer to say something, you know, you can make a review or you can call me. My contact is on the internet. I've got a website, nollywoodfrance.com. You can contact me. So I'm everywhere on uh, the social network. So you can contact me and ask questions. And then I can bring you on Zoom or on WhatsApp for a sharp debate. Very short one or long one, no matter, so far it's not an argument. I don't argue with fools. So if I find out you are a fool, I will not pick your call and I will never argue with you because we are not playing in the same league. It may as well help them to write down their own stories before the hunter writes them to glorify himself. The stories in you will dry unless you write them down. Yeah, some people will say, oh yeah, you are a writer. Oh, you have tried. That's an insult because you cannot see a doctor and say, oh, you have tried as a surgeon. So what I'll ask you if you're in that uh, mindset, go and write your own book. The stories are around you. It could be your breakfast in the morning. It could be um, the first people you met in the morning. It could be toxic people you met. It could be a nice story also. Why not write them down? If you cannot write them down, do not be like a dog in the manger. Eat the bone, no, 
give to another dog the colors. If you don't want to call me, you can call um, a writer in Lagos, a uh, writer in Ibadan. There are so many writers in Nigeria, wonderful writers that are publishing, you know, colleagues that are doing great jobs. You can call them a woman, a man, I cannot write, but I have a wonderful story for you. And then they will write it. They will write it instead of the, in the, instead of the story wasting away, or you're going to die um, with the story. And, no, and nobody will know about it. Okay, so the other book, this I published for my friend, uh, Dr. Chika, uh, Christian Ono, and uh, the title is uh, The Unusual Story of uh, the Early Years of uh, Nollywood. This is a very nice book if you want to know everything about the Nollywood industry. If you want to know everything about the Nollywood industry, read this book. You know, Dr. Chika Ono is a writer, theater practitioner, an actor, a filmmaker, and one of Nollywood's legendary directors. Having directed over a hundred Nollywood movies, including the highly acclaimed chat buster living in bondage too so you can see this is an authoritative book it's still on amazon i published it you know i did everything and we worked together for two and a half years to publish this book now the blog from the mouth of the writer through the mouth of credibility the author exudes the buried artifacts of the long ethered stories of Nollywood. Together, the mounts weave a shocking tale of fame, expectation through the ages of unimaginable discoveries in the North, East, and the West of the country Nigeria. So it's um, an interesting research. He covered the film industry in Nigeria from the beginning to date, to, to this day. He covered it. The unusual story of Nollywood is a didactic document that extrays the seminal movie, Living in Bondage, and exposes the cluster of information that may not have been intentionally hidden from the public. So he interviewed so many Nollywood directors, actors, veterans to make sure that this book comes to your shelf. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. The book is an array of simple and complex paragraphs, systematically organized groups of small and large sentences, phrases, and quotes. The book is simply expressionistic as it goes straight to appreciate both positive and negative precedents that precipitated the birth of Nollywood in Nigeria. So this is a very, very nice book. And um, it's on the, it's selling fine on Amazon. And for those who are in Nigeria, uh, we printed um, a lot of copies for you to buy. So you need to contact Dr. Chika or no, if you know him. Otherwise, you contact me or go to my website. You will find my contact or go to Amazon. Anywhere you go to, you can buy the book. So guys, this is uh, the first presentation of African writers from my desk. And uh, I presented to you all the books I published in 2022. Um, the Chicago Ashat was published in uh, 2011. 
and then I re I republished it this year because um, I had a concert in a city called Dijon, and uh, the French people over there needed that book. So please, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, please. I implore you, hit that subscribe button. Like it because it's very, very important. If you like this video, it's going to help me uh, to um, attract other people. The YouTube algorithm will place me correctly and um, other people will be able to see this uh, video. And do not miss episode two of African Writers from my desk. And um, this time is going to be how you can tell your stories. We have different episodes. And after following the whole episode, um, and after following all the episodes, you'll be able to be a writer like me, publish your own books, or maybe uh, you can be like me and publish two or three books in 2023. And that's what I wish you. Happy New Year, hard work, and always come back to this channel. We have a lot to offer. Thank you. Bye-bye.